If you can figure out your story's global genre at the very beginning of a project, and if you can start thinking about some of these things that readers are going to expect to see from a story like yours, then you're going to be way better equipped to A, get started on the right foot, B, write a story that works, and C, avoid wasting a bunch of time and energy as you write your draft. Welcome to the Fiction Writing Made Easy podcast. My name is Savannah Gilbo, and I'm here to help you write a story that works. I want to prove to you that writing a novel doesn't have to be overwhelming. So each week, I'll bring you a brand new episode with simple, actionable, and step-by-step strategies that you can implement in your writing right away. So whether you're brand new to writing or more of a seasoned author looking to improve your craft, this podcast is for you. So pick up a pen and let's get started. In today's episode, we're going to talk about genre, specifically how to choose the genre that best fits your story or your idea. And the reason I wanted to do this episode is because a lot of people ask me, how do I get started when it comes to writing a novel? Like if I have an idea for a story, what do I do with it? Or what do I do first without getting completely overwhelmed in the process? And my answer to this question is always the same because the first thing that you need to do with any new story idea is figure out which genre best suits the idea that you have. But before I walk you through how to choose the best genre for your idea, I want to talk about the difference between commercial genres and content genres so that we're on the same page. Commercial genres are the sales categories that dictate where a book is placed or how it's sold in a bookstore or online. So for example, young adult fantasy or adult science fiction would be commercial genres with target age ranges attached. And commercial genres are labels that really help the reader find the type of story they want to read. So I want you to kind of think about that as like the reader's genre. And then next, we're going to talk about content genres, which are more of the writer's genre or the lens that writers need to look at genre through. So content genres tell us what type of content needs to be in a story in order for it to satisfy readers of that genre. And each content genre has a certain set of key scenes or genre conventions that readers are going to intuitively expect to be in a story from that genre, whether they realize it or not. And these key scenes and conventions work together to give the reader a specific type of emotional experience while they're reading. And that emotional experience is different depending on the genre. And I know that might sound like splitting hairs. um, And there is some overlap between content and commercial genres. Uh, Like romance, for example, is both a commercial and a content genre, meaning like a reader could walk into a bookstore and go to a romance section and browse through all the romance books they want at one time, right? They'd also have a pretty good idea of what kind of emotional experience or what kind of reading experience they're going to have if they pick up one of these romance novels, right? But since romance is also a content genre, This can really help give us writers a clear idea of what kind of scenes, character types, settings, or whatever it is that need to be present in our stories in order for them to work. And again, these are called the obligatory scenes and conventions of the genre, and you can only know what those key scenes and conventions are if you know the content genre you're writing in. So another example I want to give you is imagine if you walk up to a young adult section in the bookstore Um, you could pick up any kind of story within the young adult section, right? You could grab a young adult mystery, a young adult romance, a young adult thriller. I mean, it literally could be anything and it's all shelved within that young adult section. And so for us writers, if we know that we want to write a young adult book, that's a good place to start, but it doesn't really give us any guidance on what kind of content needs to be in our story or what kind of scenes, character types, settings, etc., are needed to write a story that's going to satisfy readers. So long story short, as writers, we have to understand our story's commercial genre or the consumer-facing genre of our story, especially when it comes time to pitch agents or self-publish. But more importantly, we need to understand what our story's content genre is if we ever hope to write a story that works. So I hope all that makes sense. I know it's kind of a lot to think about all at once, But don't worry because I'm going to include all of these definitions and examples in the freebie for this episode. And if you want to download that, you can go to savannahgilbo.com forward slash genre. Okay, so now that we're on the same page about what commercial genres are and what content genres are, let's talk about how to start narrowing in on the content genre that's going to best fit your story or your idea. 
So the first thing you need to think about is whether your story is more plot-driven or character-driven. Plot-driven stories are stories in which the main conflict is driven by an external antagonist or an antagonistic force. So for example, the antagonist in a plot-driven story might be someone like a serial killer if you're writing a thriller, or maybe someone who's competing against the main character in a performance story. So these sources of conflict take place outside of the protagonist. Plot-driven stories make up what we call in the story grid world the external content genres, and there are nine of them. So the first content genre is action, like the Hunger Games or the Marvel movies. The second is mystery and crime, so like Murder on the Orient Express or The Godfather. The third is romance, so like Pride and Prejudice or Twilight. The fourth is thriller, like Silence of the Lambs or Gone Girl. The fifth is performance, like The Natural or The Karate Kid. The sixth is horror, like Halloween or The Shining. The seventh is society, so like Anna Karenina or Thelma and Louise. The eighth external content genre is war, like Platoon or The Hurt Locker. And the ninth external content genre is western, so like Tombstone or True Grit. And you might be wondering why I'm using movies as examples, but it's just because they're easier to consume than books. So it's more likely that a larger percent of these examples are going to resonate with more people. So moving on to character-driven stories. Character-driven stories are primarily driven by inner conflict, so conflict that comes from within the character themselves. And this could be anything from crippling self-doubt to some kind of wound from the past, or maybe a debilitating fear that's holding the protagonist back from living their best life. And there are three of these internal content genres. So the first one is morality, like Manchester by the Sea or Wall Street. The second one is status, like Milk or Gladiator. And the third one is worldview, so like Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone or the perks of being a wallflower. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering why I didn't mention science fiction or fantasy in the list of content genres. And that's because fantasy and science fiction are commercial genres or consumer facing labels, but they aren't content genres. So let me explain that a little. These labels of science fiction and fantasy tell the reader that there's going to be futuristic or scientific or magical or fantastic elements in a novel, but these labels don't really tell the reader or the writer what the story is actually going to be about or what kind of content is going to show up in the story or how the reader is going to feel while reading it. So what this means for someone who's writing science fiction or fantasy is that you still need to pick at least one of those 12 content genres in order to write a story that works. So for example, you could write an action story that takes place in a futuristic setting or something like a romance that takes place in a fantasy world or really whatever combination you want, right? And some of you guys know that I'm working on my own fantasy series. And when I first learned this, that fantasy and science fiction stories need to have a primary content genre, it kind of blew my mind in a good way. Because, I mean, it makes a ton of sense when you think about it, but it's not something that I would have naturally thought about without someone kind of opening my mind to this idea, right? And anyway, it's been super helpful for me because... It almost takes the pressure off me a little bit and, and it gives me the guidance on what I need to do if I want to write a story that works. So I'm sure some of you are also wondering if you can write a story that's both character driven and plot driven, or if you can write a story that has both an internal and an external genre. And the answer to both questions is yes. But that being said, you still need to choose one content genre to be your primary or your global genre. Because if you don't, you won't know what to focus on as you write and edit your book. And not only that, but when it comes time to market and publish your book, you're probably going to end up confusing readers too. So for example, if a reader picks up a book expecting to read a crime or a mystery story and instead ends up reading about a detective who spends the whole story mulling over his high school girlfriend instead of solving the crime, they're going to be disappointed and they're probably not going to finish your book. So it's really important to choose that one primary global genre for your story. Okay, so now that we've talked about the difference between commercial genres and content genres, and we've gone over the 12 content genres, I wanna walk you through five questions that will help you narrow in on your story's global genre. 
So question number one is what kind of role do you imagine your protagonist playing in the story? I want you to think about some basic actions that your protagonist might take. So for example, if you're writing a thriller, you might imagine that your protagonist is an investigator and his life will be in danger throughout the story. Or if you're writing a mystery or crime novel, you might imagine your protagonist to be in law enforcement or maybe the actual criminal. If you're writing a romance, you might imagine your main character falling in love or meeting the person of their dreams, right? If you're writing horror, you might imagine that your protagonist is going to play more the role of the victim who's being chased or pursued by a monster. Uh, if you're writing a worldview or like a coming of age novel, you might imagine that you're writing about a youth who's about to enter the next phase of their life. The other thing you can ask is what does your protagonist want and why? Because your hero's desire line is gonna provide the backbone of your story and each genre has a desire line that's associated with it. So for example, if your protagonist's main goal is to survive, then you might be writing an action story or a thriller or a horror novel, right? So with this first question, we're kind of just trying to narrow down in on one or a couple genres that you could see your story idea working in. For question number two, I want you to think about who or what is the antagonistic force in your story. And that's because your protagonist's relationship with the antagonist is the most important relationship in your whole story. So if you know who your antagonist is and what he or she wants, then this can help you narrow in on the right genre for your story. So stories that are in those external content genres are going to be driven by external forces of antagonism. So that's like the monster in horror stories or the criminal or murderer in mystery or crime stories or the potential love interest in romance novels. And then we have the stories that are in the internal genres that are driven primarily by that internal conflict or the conflict that comes from within your protagonist. So for example, if you were writing a morality story, the conflicts would kind of center around your protagonist as the external events or other characters challenge your protagonist's moral code. Hopefully that makes sense. Moving on to question number three, I want you to consider what central question is your story asking? So every story has a central question, and this question is what you want to evoke in the reader and what you want them to wonder about as they read the story. So for example, if you're writing a romance, that central question is going to be around whether these two individuals are going to live happily ever after, right? If you're writing a murder mystery, then that central question is going to be around whether or not the murderer or the criminal is going to be caught and brought to justice. Um, if you're writing a coming of age or a worldview story, then that central question might be something like, how is this protagonist going to deal with these big changes that are happening in their life? Or how are they going to make sense of their new place in the world? Right? Something like that. And another way you can think about this is what kind of crucial decision is your protagonist going to have to make by the end of the story? So for example, if your protagonist has to decide between doing right and doing wrong, then you might be writing a morality story. Or if your protagonist has to decide whether or not to sacrifice themselves so that others can survive, then you might be writing an action story or a thriller. So sometimes it's just helpful to think about these kinds of questions that we want to evoke in the reader or these decisions or kind of the answer to those questions that the protagonist is going to have to make. And then question number four is what topic or universal theme is your story exploring? So another way to figure out what your global genre might be is to ask what the point of your story is or kind of what you have to say about life or the world or human nature or love or whatever it is, right? And that's because each genre has its own controlling idea or theme. So if you can identify the topic or theme you want to write about, then you can usually identify the global genre of your story. So for example, if you wanted to explore the power of love, then you're probably writing a romance. Or if you wanted to talk about justice or the bad guys being brought to justice or escaping justice, then you might be writing something like a thriller or a mystery or a crime novel. And then question number five is, what are your comp titles or what stories in the market are most like the story you want to write? So if you haven't been able to identify your genre by answering the questions that we just went over, then you can start to look to your comp titles for some clues. Um, comp titles are comparative titles, so they're the stories that already exist in the world that are the most like the one you're going to write. So for example, if Twilight or Outlander were your comp titles or 
kind of the inspiration for your story or if they were stories that had the same kind of feel that you wanted your story to have, then you could identify the genre of those stories to help you get clarity around what your global content genre is. Now, if you wanted to write a story more like The Giver or The Handmaid's Tale, then that might point you in the direction of telling a society story. Or if you wanted to write something more like Alien or The Shining, then that would point you in the direction of horror. And what I really like about using comp titles to kind of help us decide on our global content genre is that this also allows us to see how other stories like ours have handled the key scenes and conventions of that genre. So it can kind of be a fun exercise if you feel like you want to study other stories in your genre too to see how they've handled things or, you know, what they've done well or what they haven't done well, right? And another benefit of having these comp titles is that when it comes time to kind of query agents or if you want to traditionally publish your book, um, you're going to need to have them anyway. So you might as well start to identify them early in the process. So hopefully those five questions have helped you at least head in the right direction of what your story's global genre might be. Um, And as a reminder, you can download the freebie for this episode at savannagilbo.com forward slash genre that has all five of these questions and all of the genres listed out with examples so that you can kind of work through them and just hopefully get to an answer about what your story's global content genre is. So again, you can download that at savannagilbo.com forward slash genre. Now, you might be wondering what you should do next once you've identified your global content genre. I'm not going to go into all this now, but I kind of just want to show you how identifying your story's global genre first can really help you start writing a story. So once you've narrowed in on the global genre for your story, you're going to be able to start getting a sense of things like the overall shape of your story, including those key scenes and conventions that readers are intuitively going to expect to see in your story, whether they realize it or not. And you can also get a sense of the primary change that's going to take place from the beginning of the story to the end of the story, including the kind of change or transformation your character is going to go through. And then you can also start to get a sense of what your protagonist is going to be chasing throughout the story. So what they're going to want and what they're going to need or kind of what their external goals are and then what's that internal thing that they really need to feel happy or fulfilled, um, which can give you a lot of insight into your story's theme as well. So, I mean, all of that's pretty cool, right? Just by determining our global genre up front, we can already get a sense of so many things. And now I wanna walk you through an example of how this could play out in real life. So let's say I decided that I was gonna write a murder mystery. Once I know that, I can start to think about the types of things that readers are gonna expect to see, experience, and feel while reading my novel. And this is gonna give me a really good starting point. So if we know that I'm writing a murder mystery, we can start to get a sense of what readers might expect throughout the beginning, middle, and end of our story. So for example, in the beginning, readers are probably going to expect to see a dead body or a scene where the dead body is uncovered because I'm writing a murder mystery and you can't have a murder mystery without a murder, right? And then throughout the middle, readers are probably going to expect to see a sequence of scenes where the detective or investigator is interviewing people and uncovering clues and learning new information that's putting them on the path toward finding this murderer, right? And then toward the very end, readers are going to expect to see some kind of scene where the identity of the murderer is finally revealed. Um, And this is that scene that's going to answer the question that was raised in the beginning of who done it or of who killed this person, right? So in the beginning, we're asking a question or opening a loop for the reader. And then by the end, we're answering that question and closing the loop. And just by thinking about it like that, we've already got a general shape of the story, right? We kind of know what needs to happen in the beginning, we know what needs to happen in the middle, and we know what needs to happen at the end. And none of those things we just went over are super specific, so you can still add your creativity and your ideas to that general framework, right? The other thing we can start to think about is how readers are going to expect to feel when they read a murder mystery. So... If I pick up a murder mystery, I'm going to expect to feel like kind of a sense of mystery or intrigue as I try to figure out who the murderer is, right? Like when you read a murder mystery, you want to figure it out before the detective or at least at the same time as the detective. That tells me that I'm going to need to come up with some clues and some red herrings or false clues for this detective and for my reader to to chase throughout the middle of the story. Now, I'm sure some of you are thinking that all of this sounds a little obvious when they're listed out like that. 
Um, but just this simple exercise of sitting down and thinking about some of the things readers would expect from a story like yours is not something I see a lot of writers do. And instead, I see a lot of writers who kind of just dive into writing scenes or writing an outline. But what happens most of the time is that they either end up with a story that doesn't work or they'll get stuck in the middle of an outline or a draft with no clear way forward and then they'll kind of just give up. So long story short, if you can figure out your story's global genre at the very beginning of a project, and if you can start thinking about some of these things that readers are going to expect to see from a story like yours, then you're going to be way better equipped to A, get started on the right foot, B, write a story that works, and C, avoid wasting a bunch of time and energy as you write your draft. So now I want to recap some of the key points that we went over in the episode. Number one is that as writers, we need to be aware of both the commercial genre and the content genre of our stories. And it's that content genre that really tells us how to craft a compelling story that's going to deliver a specific emotional experience to our readers. Number two is that fantasy and science fiction are consumer-facing labels or commercial genres. So if you're writing a science fiction or fantasy novel, you still need to pick one main content genre for your story if you wanna write a story that's gonna work. Number three is that if your story is going to have both an internal and an external genre, then you still need to choose one to be your primary genre so that you know what to focus on as you write and edit your story. The fourth key point is that you can start to figure out your story genre by asking things like what kind of role your protagonist is gonna play and who or what is the main force of antagonism in your story. You can look at things like what the central question of your story is, or what theme or topic you're going to be exploring, or even what some of your comp titles are. And then key point number five is that once you've narrowed in on your story's global genre, you can start to get a better sense of the shape of your story, including those obligatory scenes and conventions that need to be present in order to write a story that's going to satisfy readers of that genre. So, okay, I know that was a lot to cover, and honestly, this was probably my favorite episode to record so far because I could literally talk about genre all day, but I won't. (laughs) So I hope you guys found this episode helpful, and just to remind you, you can grab the freebie for this episode at savannagilbo.com forward slash genre. The freebie recaps everything we went over today, including those five questions that are going to help you figure out your story's global genre, as well as a list of what those 12 content genres are. So again, you can get that freebie at savannagilbo.com forward slash genre. So that's it for today's show. As always, I want to thank you so much for tuning in and showing your support. If you want to check out any of the links I mentioned in this episode, you can find them over at savannagilbo.com forward slash podcast. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the show because there's going to be another brand new episode coming out next week. If you're an Apple user, I'd really appreciate it if you took a few seconds to leave a quick rating and review. Your ratings and reviews tell iTunes that this is a podcast that's worth listening to. And in turn, that helps this show get in front of more fiction writers just like you. So that's it for today's show. I'll be back next week with a brand new episode. Until then, happy writing.